the other thing was uh, i had this this morning with many i was talking about generally data lakes files in in buckets why would you drop the why would you use this first of all i said for for um, machine learning because you don't want to extract the data from the uh, from a data store you can work directly with files uh, for uh, as a source for or as a storage for the raw data that is coming in but also one cool thing and ram and i we were discussing this as well this week um that you you can have a data warehouse where you actually say okay uh, this data warehouse for instance uh, snowflake um has the option of actually creating external tables where you use a raw data format and yeah, i we are also talking about this right where you use the raw storage as external tables here with your with your data warehouse and where you can easily query the data then um aws has has a nice method there or two tools redshift spectrum and athena with redshift spectrum you need to create a redshift data warehouse and you can use it in the redshift the cool thing with that is that it's integrated so if you have if you already have procedures in your data warehouse that you've created with psql how they write it in, in redshift then it, it fully integrates uh, and you can use that just as a as a table if you have if you use or if you want to go really simple with just querying data they have something called athena on aws where you can do the same thing where you drop files into a bucket uh, and uh, have athena then query it and the nice thing yeah that's that's these are the two options the nice thing with uh, how aws it does it is that glue uh, has a data catalog and you can actually catalog the data that is laying around within your data lake within your buckets so glue then has the structure in a table format the, when you need to think of it like you have a csv file here then glue would create creates tables and we create a table for that C, for the for those csv files or for these files in that folder and then has the the column names and has the structures uh, has the data types so you don't need to configure actually here how does the data look in my bucket you can you can take it from the data catalog and and use it straightforward it's it's really nice yeah. really cool to actually um create this and this is this is one of the big use cases for actually storing data into your data lake so you don't need to transfer transfer it into a uh, into a data warehouse where it might blow up the data warehouse because you have a lot of data so mm -hmm. you keep the data warehouse small but you are still able from the warehouse to query the data that lays around in your sure in your uh, in your yeah in your data lake it's it's you find that everywhere uh, with our wind i was talking yesterday about uh big query big query has the same thing yeah. where you can uh we data catalog i didn't see but uh generally that you can actually query data from a data lake uh, and in, in mm -hmm. gcp it's also called buckets so that's also possible i added here if you want to do this at some point there are for spectrum it's important that you that you give your cluster a um a role with these two policies in it s3 read only so that it actually can do a read only from the s3 bucket your that it, your, your redshift is yep. allowed to that and uh, because you're using the data catalog you want to have full access oh, for okay. the data catalog so that it can actually read data from the data catalog of course as always when you talk about these policies and and the cloud platforms these are that's a full access you could then limit this to that it only has access to certain <laughs> certain yep. parts of the data catalog and that's for for every cloud uh, interesting 